Welcome to day seven of our Easter devotional series, The Week That Changed the World. Today's reading is Matthew chapter 28, verses one to 10. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. It's Easter morning. It's been quiet since Friday. Sullen faces and heads full of questions. How could it end like this? Wasn't he supposed to save us? We see two women, both called Mary, making their way to the tomb early in the morning to prepare Jesus' body. But then the dawn chorus is shattered by this earthquake and these two women witness this incredible scene. Outside the tomb, an angel from heaven comes and rolls away the stone. This bright figure with an appearance like lightning breaks through the morning gloom. Amazingly, these two women are still looking on in intrigue. The same can't be said for the battle-hardened Roman guards who are out cold from the fear of the angel. Then comes the news that turns this bleakest despair into the brightest of hope. The angel says, do not be afraid, for I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen. Just imagine how these two women must have been feeling as they're being told this news. The Jesus they were coming to prepare for burial is now alive? How could this be? They have a conversation with the angel and they're told to go and tell the disciples. They hurry away to share this news and then they bump into Jesus himself, the very person they thought was dead only moments ago is now standing in front of them. The Jesus who has displayed his power by breaking the curse of sin and death, by breaking the very ground on which his tomb stood, and by breaking through the bleakest despair on that first Easter Sunday. The powerful, triumphant, risen Lord Jesus can be known as we see in our passage in verse 10. Here the Son of God, Jesus Christ, speaks with kindness. Do not be afraid, he said. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. Do we see how throughout this passage they've been called the disciples by both the angel and Matthew himself? But here, Jesus calls them brothers. And do remember the last thing the disciples did to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane only a few days earlier. They let him down. They didn't watch out for him. They ran away. They denied knowing him. That was the last encounter they had. But Jesus' first words on resurrection morning are words of forgiveness, words of love. They're not just disciples to Jesus, they're brothers. Jesus is bringing in this new kingdom, a kingdom that says to the outsiders, to the sinners, to the deserters and the deniers, people like you and me this morning, 
that through what Jesus has accomplished, through his death and through his resurrection, that those people, you and me, can be brought into a relationship with Jesus Christ. We can be made sinless. We can be made blameless. We can be free, not because of what we have done, but because Jesus has thrown down and broken the chains of sin and death. They have no power over him anymore. They have no power over those who call Jesus Lord. You can know this truth this morning in your own life. A relationship with Jesus. Not a relationship where we are far from God, but one where we are brought near, called as brothers and sisters of Christ Jesus, children of our Heavenly Father. What's your response going to be this Easter morning to the risen Lord Jesus? Is it to fall down and worship? Is it to accept the welcome into this new kingdom? as brothers and sisters of the one who is alive this Easter morning. The bleak despair has gone. And the brightest of hope is here. His name is Jesus Christ. He is risen. He is alive. We hope that you found today's devotional an encouragement. Tune in tomorrow to hear more about Jesus and this week that changed the world.